Which NFL teams are the best and which NFL teams are the worst at drafting? What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Mitch here, ranking all 32 NFL teams based on their ability to draft players. Because the way I see it, no one actually goes back and evaluates draft grades. If it was an A, it was an A. If it was an F, it was an F, and nobody cares. So in this video, I'm evaluating a five-year period, 2017 through 2021, because 2022 is just too close. It's too close to home. It's too hard to evaluate a draft one year after it happened. So I'm evaluating that five-year period and evaluating every team's ability to draft franchise players, starters, and gems. Their ability to turn their average draft position into actual profit just because a team had a lot of picks and they gained a lot of players doesn't mean they're actually good at efficiently drafting players. So I'm taking everything into account. And remember, this is extremely subjective because it's really hard to evaluate teams based on drafting because everyone sees it a little bit differently and values things a little bit differently. So that's why I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Where would you rank your favorite team's ability to draft? Gronk spiked the like button, and let's get going with the list. Kicking off the drafting ability list at number 32, dead last, the worst team in the NFL at drafting, the Arizona Cardinals. And actually, after thinking about it, this makes a lot of sense because they probably have arguably the worst roster in the NFL right now. Kyler Murray was a first overall pick, but the funny thing about Kyler Murray is people forget that they drafted Kyler Murray one year after they drafted Josh Rosen. So their best pick, arguably, the one that they paid all the money to, came after probably their worst pick that they ever made. On top of that, they've picked two linebackers in the first round, both of which are not very good players. Isaiah Simmons, still waiting on him. Zayvon Collins, still waiting on him. Yeah, they picked Buda Baker. Other than that, they have picked really no good quality, above average, Pro Bowl level players. They have no franchise players other than forcing Kyler Murray to gain a contract. This team, straight up, flat out, has stunk at drafting. It makes sense they have a new general manager. Hopefully they can turn that around. They have done nothing well drafting wise. They have not had a plan and that's why they rank last. The second worst team in the NFL at drafting is the Houston Texans. And this of course is another one that makes a lot of sense. But this is a team that mostly is here at number 31 because they have not had a lot of great picks, at least from 2017 through 2021, they did not have a lot of high quality first round picks, which obviously impacts your ability to pick good franchise type players. Deshaun Watson was one of them, but that was a fiasco. And Deshaun Watson is really the guy that allowed a Justin Reed to walk out of the door. One of their other good picks. They've had guys that have been serviceable starters for a year or two even some that have developed into pretty good starters like Titus Howard at tackle. They've had some decent picks, but they've just not had a lot of high quality picks. In 2022-2023, two first round picks in both seasons. So that is where they should really be cashing in. Last year's draft, still up for debate. This year's draft, they have to hit a home run. But during this period, 2017 through 2021, just not a lot that has helped this roster at all. So you have to put them near the bottom of the list. The 30th best team in the NFL or third worst team in the NFL at drafting from 2017 through 2021. This is going to shock people because they had an excellent draft last year. The Seattle Seahawks. Yeah. And this is just a case of when you win a lot of games, it's harder to draft. When you're constantly picking at the end of the first round or you don't even have a first round pick because you're using it to trade for Jamal Adams to go all in and help your defense, 
then you're not going to draft a lot of great players because it's harder to gain and add better players at the end of the draft. That's why it's so hard to pick from 27 through 32 all the time. But the Seattle Seahawks had some good picks. Enough of them to definitely elevate outside of the bottom tier of drafting teams, even despite some years not having a first round pick, even some years of completely whiffing on pick after pick. But they definitely had some first rounds where they totally missed. And that definitely accounts for a lot on my list. So Seattle really turned it around in 2022, and I expect that to continue into 2023, but it definitely helps to have more premier picks like they have now instead of the ones that they used to have. The fourth worst team in the NFL at drafting, the 29 best team in the NFL at drafting, is the New York J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets. Now the funny thing about the Jets is If you're accounting for like pure top end talent that they've drafted, yeah, they've drafted quite a few really good players. Quinn and Williams, Jamal Adams, Marcus May, Elijah Vera Tucker even. They've had some really good picks. And 2022 looks to be a pretty promising draft class, but again, that's not included. The Jets though, struggled to keep a lot of those players on their team for whatever reason. Jamal Adams... Marcus May, good examples of that. Quinn and Williams is probably their best pick, but the other problem I have with the Jets from 2017 through 2021 is their misses outside of that first round and even some of these first round picks that were picked in the top 10, like they've had premier pick after premier pick. Like Zach Wilson set the franchise back. No way around it. Now they have Aaron Rodgers for a year or two, but they wouldn't have needed him if they would have just nailed Zach Wilson. To be fair, I also missed on that one. But the Jets are a team that a lot of high quality picks and a lot of misses. And they've just recently been able to turn that around. So the Jets are at 29. At number 28, the Chicago Bears. The Bears are a funky one for me. I think you could argue they should be higher. You could argue they could be lower. They haven't had a ton of great quality picks, but they have pretty consistently picked in the top half of drafts. And they've missed on a lot of their picks. Their best pick arguably was Roquan Smith, and he's not on the team anymore. I would argue that a lot of the guys that are starting for them right now weren't even that good of picks. Like, I'm not sold on Justin Fields, for example. The Chicago Bears have had some late round finds, but none that are like franchise caliber players. They've had some really good seasons out of players like Darnell Mooney and Eddie Jackson, but very inconsistent all around. So the Chicago Bears, we'll see moving forward with this new regime. But as of right now... They have not been very good at replenishing talent. At number 27, the Las Vegas Raiders. The Raiders are at number 27 because they had really more picks than anybody at the top of the draft. And they have really only come away with like a few franchise caliber players. One of them being a running back. One of them being a fourth round edge player. One of them being a very late Hunter Renfro edition. Not a lot of guys that have been home run picks for them when they really just replenished draft capital with Mike Mayock and John Gruden. They had so many picks and they missed on so many picks. Leatherwood, Arnett, Ruggs, Farrell. I mean, you go down the list. Abram, miss, bust, miss, bust. It's ridiculous. But that being said, I mean, they still picked a few really awesome football players. Max Crosby, Colton Miller, Josh Jacobs, Hunter Renfro, Nate Hobbs. Some really awesome players in the mix. So the Raiders are a tricky one, but based on how many high quality picks they missed, 
they have to be in the bottom five-ish. At number 26, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, this might be also pretty surprising because the Pittsburgh Steelers traditionally have been a very good team at drafting. But I think part of the problem with the Steelers is they have not actually cashed in on first round picks to the quality that you would think. They had some misses in the mix over the past few years, and they also haven't been able to keep around some of their players that you would have thought early on, like Juju, would have stayed around for years. But they haven't been able to keep those guys on their team, which means they overall didn't really cash in on that pick. TJ Watt was by far their best pick, but... If you consider Najee Harris to potentially be their second best pick, which is like, I don't know, just because of production, like, I don't really know. Who's their second best pick? Deontay Johnson, maybe, who is a later round pick. But like, the Steelers have failed in the draft. They have failed to acquire offensive linemen. They have failed to acquire quality secondary players. They've missed on Terrell Edmonds, for example. There's just been too many misses high in the draft. Other than the receiver position, this team just hasn't had a good handle in recent history. At number 25, the Tennessee Titans. It does make sense why the Tennessee Titans moved in a different direction last season at the GM spot. Because they made a lot of questionable decisions when it came to drafting. They missed on a lot of players in the first and early rounds. And the ones that they hit on, they failed to keep them around. I mean, A.J. Brown, I understand they turned him into another first-round pick, but that's a franchise player you can't let walk. You can't trade that guy. There have been players that they have picked that I really like. Jeffrey Simmons is going to be there a long time. Harold Landry, I loved coming out. They nailed that pick. Amani Hooker was a sleeper that they absolutely got right. There has been some really good picks by the Titans, even guys like Jayon Brown, Jonu Smith, some pretty good picks in the mix that weren't high caliber picks. But overall, this is a team that's had their opportunities and has big time missed on quite a few firsts and has just failed to keep that core together of the guys that they actually wanted to keep around. At number 24, the Jacksonville Jags. Jacksonville is one of the trickiest teams to evaluate when it comes to drafting ability because 2021 was an awesome draft. Like if Urban Meyer did anything right, it was that 2021 draft. Obviously Trevor Lawrence, but you also have Travis Etienne. You also have their best corner and one of the best corners that nobody talks about, Tyson Campbell even Walker Little. So you got a, quite a few good players from just 2021. But the thing with Jacksonville that's also hard to quantify is they've had a lot of high picks. Josh Allen, good player, but they picked him really high, right? Leonard Fournette was good for a period, but he's mostly a miss when you consider everything. Cam Robinson, Jawan Taylor, pretty decent players. Jawan Taylor ended up leaving for bigger money elsewhere. I like quite a few of their picks, and I've liked them over the years, but quite a few of them have also missed. So Jacksonville's one of those tricky teams where does like one season of amazing drafting kind of outweigh like two or three years of just bad drafting. So that's why I have them here. At number 23, the Detroit Lions. The Lions, I would say, are closer to an average team when it comes to drafting. One of the things that I find frustrating about their draft, specifically in that Matt Patricia era, is they didn't really gain any franchise players. It's hard to think of any guys that they've picked, especially in that middle of the first round area, where they've just hit a home run. Like, they've picked some good players, like Frank Ragnow, Amon Ra, St. Brown, and now recently, right, Penny Sewell and St. Brown in 2021. Those guys are probably franchise guys. Sewell was also a top 10 pick. But like, Frank Ragnow was like the best guy you picked, a center for the three years previous to that. That's not great. DeAndre Swift, a running back, that's not great. Like, a lot of guys that are fine, whatever. Tracy Walker in like the third round, okay, that's great. Like, 
not a lot of difference making players like some decent picks some nice picks also some misses like Jeff Okuda was a huge miss like a ginormous miss right so they've had some huge misses as well that's been the Lions over their history they've consistently picked pretty high and consistently missed at a pretty high rate but it does feel like this recent regime has a pretty good handle on drafting, especially when it comes to the players at the line of scrimmage. And I look forward to what they can do into the future. I think this is a team on the rise when it comes to their drafting ability. At number 22, the New York G-Men. The Giants, I would say, are one of those teams that when you evaluate their drafts, typically they don't look overwhelming. But then when you look back at their first round picks, They've largely hit on some kind of weird names that people criticized at the moment. Like that one draft where they picked Daniel Jones and Dexter Lawrence. When you look back at that draft, they got some really good value on those guys when people kind of ripped in f to them for those picks. Like Dexter Lawrence probably is a top 10 pick. I don't know off the top of my head. But in that draft, probably top 10, Daniel Jones ends up being one of the better quarterbacks in that class, which was a relatively weak class. So the Giants have cashed in awkwardly in some bad drafts. Like taking Saquon Barkley has mostly been, I guess you would categorize it as underwhelming, mostly due to the fact that he's gotten hurt, but not because you wouldn't take him again. Like if he's healthy the whole time, he's probably on Hall of Fame trajectory by now. So it's kind of some weird picks for them. Andrew Thomas was a really good pick when a lot of people didn't see it coming. Xavier McKinney was a good pick. They've had some good picks, even like a Darius Slayton later in the draft, but they've also been very inconsistent with their picking. So it's one of those teams that's kind of tricky to figure out. I almost feel like they've had some of their best picks in weaker drafts. At number 21, the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings, of course, have recently turned over their general manager, and their management. So this regime was the previous regime that was picking most of these players. But they have picked some really good players, as the Vikings have throughout their history. They just seem to have an eye with that purple and that yellow for just high-end players, especially at wide receiver. Justin Jefferson was a absolute money pick. Like, one of the best draft picks of the past 20 years. Justin Jefferson. What did he go as like the fourth receiver in that class? That's a crazy good value. Christian Derisaw was a crazy good value looking back at it. Dalvin Cook in the second round. If you would have said you're going to get all that out of Dalvin Cook, a second round pick, even though he's a running back, I'd say, wow, Brian O'Neill, very good pick. But there's been others where you've said Jeff Gladney, oof. You know, there's been some picks where the, the Vikings had certainly missed. And even at the time, you're like, that wasn't a good pick. Like, that was a miss. It's it's funny with the Vikings, but it feels like you know when the guy's going to be good for the Vikings. And you know when he's not going to be very good for the Vikings. It's one of those teams where you can almost project it before it even happens. At number 20, the Los Angeles Rams. Now, the Rams are by far the toughest team to evaluate because as everybody knows, they have not had any first round picks. Like, I think literally zero over the past five years. So how do you evaluate that team? And I mostly looked at it as how did they do with the picks that they had? And there's even been players where they actually didn't turn out to be Rams. Like John Franklin Myers, I think they picked in the fourth round. He ends up being a borderline all pro for the New York Jets. There's been some picks that they've had where they totally like misevaluated what they could offer that team, but they've also had some really good like depth players. There's been a reason they've been able to get away with trading so many of their picks for high quality players because they've been able to replenish depth players very, very well. Like you look at the corner position over the years, look at offensive line, which is very, very notable with like note boom and you look at Brian Allen and guys like that, where they've just been able to find starting capable caliber players. Of course, they nailed Cooper Cup, right? But other than that, they haven't had that many home run picks. They've had good, decent picks. A lot of depth players that have since moved on, like Sebastian Joseph Day type players. But nothing too stellar. It's just they've had a lot of mid-round picks that have turned into like solid NFL players. 
and they've done a really good job at picking those kind of players and allowing Sean McVay and this great coaching staff to coach those guys up in their system. At number 19, the Atlanta Falcons. Shout out to Thomas Dimitrov for his drafting over the years. That's my guy, but the Atlanta Falcons are at number 19. Of course, Dimitrov no longer there, but he picked a lot of these players from Chris Lindstrom to Caleb McGarry to AJ Terrell. He had a lot of good picks, especially in the first round. And it's kind of weird that a lot of those picks ended up developing after he left, which was unfortunate for him, but that's what ended up happening. He also had some misses for a period there where like Tack McKinley, guys like that that didn't exactly turn out, but everybody has misses in that first round eventually, especially where you were Atlanta in that like 2016 range, 2017 range, where they were picking pretty deep in the draft. So it was difficult to find those top upper echelon players. But for the most part, Atlanta, I feel like has done a pretty good job at finding good players. They've struggled with pass rushers. They've struggled with quarterback after Matt Ryan. But other than that, they found a receiver in Calvin Ridley who since moved on. They found a tight end in Kyle Pitts who was drafted extremely high, but they found one. They drafted really well on the offensive line and developed those guys really well. They've picked great linebackers. Alua Khan they found really deep, but a lot of these players ended up leaving, right? So the Falcons are a tricky one. I think they're a pretty average team when it comes to drafting. At number 18, the Denver Broncos. The Broncos are at number 18 despite them drafting a ton of starters that are still on their roster. The tough part with the Denver Broncos in evaluating their draft history is, yeah, they got a lot of guys that have played for them, but it's kind of their thing. Like, they are not a huge free agency team until Sean Payton walked through the door. They like to have their drafted players play a lot. And they like to have them see time and develop. So that's just part of the way that they acquire players. They like to draft players to play. And some of those players have been good players. They've had some good picks. Cortland Sutton was a great pick, especially with the value. They had a great pick in Garrett Bowles, who kind of developed a little bit later. But they've had some decent picks, some bad picks... Some disappointing picks, Jerry Judy. Some really good picks, it feels like, in Patrick Sertan. But they're difficult because they don't have a ton of franchise players. They missed on quarterbacks. And it feels like Denver has just been, because they missed on so many quarterbacks and they missed on that position, they've been unable to really capitalize on the rest of the draft to build that team around the quarterback. At number 17, the Carolina Panthers. There's one thing that the recent Carolina Panthers regime did. It was take a look at the college game and find players that could help them in the pros. They may not have been a great coaching staff, but they were decent at evaluating college talent. And they have picked some really good players that I do think are franchise caliber players they've picked brian burns they picked Derek brown taylor moton is a really good player jc horn is a borderline future franchise player they picked some really good players even like Derek chin is a guy i really like they've had some good drafts but they've again failed to find that next quarterback and now they're in a spot where they had to trade up from number nine to number one because they were never in a position to find their franchise quarterback in the first round, in the early first round. They weren't bold enough to make selections when they had the ability to make selections. And they've also missed on a few guys. But I would say about Carolina, their first rounds, even the guys that are no longer there, were really good picks. From 2017 through 2021, their first round picks were really good. CMC, DJ Moore, right? JC Horn, Derek Brown. These, these guys are good. Brian Burns, I mean, that's their five picks. They didn't miss on any of them. Some of them left, some of them 
got Bryce Young, but they hit those. So that meant a lot to me when evaluating their draft history. They're really good in the first round. At number 16, the Miami Dolphins. Miami is such a difficult team to evaluate when it comes to draft history because they had so many picks, so many first round picks. There's been drafts, 2020 was a draft where I was like, that was not a good draft. Like, even if you think Tua turned out to be okay, they could have picked Justin Herbert. So like, he's not as good as Justin Herbert, but they missed on the other two first round picks. They're still trying to make Austin Jackson work, but they missed on those guys, right? Iga Bahamani or whatever his name is. <laughs> he's not like playing. So, but 2021 was a really good draft. Javon Holland, Jalen Waddle, awesome players. Jalen Phillips is a really good football player. They, they've they had some really good picks down the line. Christian Wilkins was a great player. Even Davis is a decent player. So they've had some really good picks from 2017 through 2021. But there's the caveat that they've had so many premier picks and so many first round picks that of course you're going to pick good players. It just only makes sense when you have that many picks to choose from. At number 15, the New Orleans Saints. The Saints are at number 15, and a lot of it has to do with the 2017 draft. The 2017 draft's one of the greatest drafts of all time, in my opinion, from what the New Orleans Saints were able to do in that draft class. Ryan Ramscheck, Alvin Kamara, even guys that are no longer on the team, like Trey Hendrickson, I think in like the fifth round. They had a ridiculous draft, and it really helped them win in those later years with Drew Brees. But really, since Drew Brees left, they have failed in a lot of their drafts to acquire consistent football players that are going to make an impact. They've found fine role players, but they've failed to find really difference-making players. 2017 with Lattimore and Ramscheck and those guys, phenomenal. But other than that, I mean, yeah, a couple good offensive linemen and McCoy and Ruiz but nothing special, nothing franchise altering, right? They never really went the quarterback route to replace Drew Brees quite yet. They, Chris Olave was last year, so that's not really in account here for their drafting capabilities. And they failed to kind of replenish their defense with superstars. The next Cameron Jordan was supposed to be Marcus Davenport. He was okay, but they ended up letting him walk, right? So they've not been able to replenish those guys the way they thought they would. Demario Davis wasn't replenished by Zach Bond, right? So the Saints missed on quite a few picks in recent years, which has really hurt their stock when it comes to drafting. At number 14, the Cleveland Browns. The Browns are a lot like the Miami Dolphins. They have a lot of players that were drafted by them that are starting. They have 10 players that are starting that they drafted. They really hit on Miles Garrett and Nick Chubb and Denzel Ward. Other than that, they found pretty decent players across the board, but they had so many picks and they whiffed on some of their biggest picks, right? They missed on Baker Mayfield. I think you would call that a miss. Despite him bringing the Browns to the playoffs one year, you could have had Josh Allen. You could have had Lamar Jackson. It was the first overall pick. You missed. So the Cleveland Browns have had some really good picks. Even David Njoku is one that developed a little bit later, but became a good pick. They found a Donovan Peoples-Jones late. They've had picks I like, but the quarterback one really, really, really is heavy on my mind. And some of their big misses early in the draft are heavy on my mind. So a team with a lot of picks, a team with still a lot of starters that they picked, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're most efficient at drafting. At number 13, almost the exact opposite from the Cleveland Browns, the New England Patriots. The New England Patriots, despite their reputation, have been very good at drafting as of late. They had some years where they really struggled there. But there was also years where they didn't really have any picks and they didn't have any first round picks. So the Patriots have actually, I believe, averaged their first pick like out of the first round or something to that degree. So the Patriots 
have really been having to capitalize on the volume that they've had and capitalize on the quantity over the quality of picks because with that Tom Brady era, they were picking so high in the draft and they've only recently had a high pick. Even last year, they didn't have a high pick. The only decently high pick was Mac Jones, which I believe was 15th overall. So it wasn't even that high. This 2023 is going to be the highest pick they've had in years. So the Patriots have been able to capitalize off having pretty bad draft position. When you look at, especially from 2020, 2021, you've got guys like Michael Onwenu, you got guys like Mac Jones, Christian Barmore, Josh Uche, Ramondre Stevenson, Jawan Bentley, even dating back to 2017, Dietrich Wise. All these guys they drafted, all these guys were not really first round picks other than what, Mac Jones? So they've hit, like Josh Uche is a double digit sack guy from the second round. Kyle Duggar is one of the best safeties in the league from the second round. Ramondre Stevenson, one of the best running backs in the league in what, the fourth round. So they have been low key, really good at drafting as of late. And I think that's going to continue, especially if Belichick continues to pick in the top 15. I hope not, but it probably will continue that way. At number 12, the Green Bay Packers. For as much as we make fun of their inability to draft a receiver in the first round, the Green Bay Packers have drafted very well for the most part over the years and have supported Aaron Rodgers with great football teams and great talent. There's a reason last year people were like, well, they have the most talented defense on paper entering the NFL. There's been seasons where people were like, do they have a hole on the team? I've constantly looked at their team like they always have a good offensive line. They're spectacular. They're probably the best team in the league at picking offensive linemen. They're spectacular. They hit on edge rushers like Rashawn Gary. They hit on secondary players like Jair Alexander. They hit on a receiver recently last year, which doesn't count towards this. They've hit on running backs like... A.J. Dillon, but more prominently, Aaron Jones. They've hit on a lot of different positions. Yeah, they've had some slight misses. Like, Darnell Savage is maybe a slight miss. He's had some really good years, some really bad years. First round pick, but a little bit of a miss maybe. But like, Elton Jenkins, a spectacular pick. Josh Myers, good pick. Jordan Love might end up being a good pick. We'll see. But the question will be, was Jordan Love a good pick? Jordan Love is really going to determine how good they actually are at picking because Aaron Rodgers is now gone. At number 11, just outside of the top 10, is the Baltimore Ravens, a team that it feels like every year gets an A-plus in their draft grade, and that's mostly right in terms of their ability to draft, but I would actually argue that 2018 is really the draft that is holding up their standard that is holding up their kind of legacy of drafting because without Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews in 2018 you look at 2019 2020 2021 and yeah there's some okay players some guys you like you know there's the Tyus Bowsers and the Oways and the Patrick Queens and guys that maybe we haven't quite seen what they are yet Rashad Bateman but some quality players but not stars The stars they drafted, Mark Andrews, Lamar Jackson, those are the guys, right? Those are the guys. Otherwise, I think they might be a little overrated when it comes to drafting because I think a lot of people think of them as like a top team when it comes to drafting, but they're good. They're above average. I wouldn't say they're great or phenomenal. Entering the top 10 drafting teams in the NFL today, at number 10, a team that you could argue is the best team at drafting in the first round. And that's the Los Angeles Chargers. But you could also argue that they're just plain lucky. Either way, the Chargers are a top 10 drafting team. You gotta be a little lucky to be good. And the Chargers have been very good in the first round. Joey Boza does not count, but they picked him. Then they picked Derwin James. And they picked Mike Williams. And they picked Justin Herbert. Then they picked Rashawn Slater. So this team's been really good at drafting in the first round and in early rounds. And that's where they've made most of their money. 
They picked a couple decent players after that. I really like Asante Samuel Jr. Josh Palmer seems like a pretty good player. But this team, I feel like, has just made their reputation off of first round. And a lot of times, those are the only picks that actually come through for teams on a consistent basis. So I got to put them at number 10. At number 9, and honestly, when I was going through this process in this list... The fact that they're inside the top 10 and they're still a mediocre franchise, I think speaks volumes to everything else. It speaks volumes to their coaching. It speaks volumes to their ownership. The Washington Commanders. The Washington Commanders are a good drafting franchise. They're especially phenomenal at drafting front seven players, especially defensive linemen. I mean, they have four guys they picked in the first round on their team that are good football players. Yeah, Chase Young's been injured, but he's good. Montez Sweat is really good. Deron Payne got paid. He's really good. Jonathan Allen is a stud. So they have franchise players. And then on top of that, Cameron Curl was a late round good safety pick. Terry McLaurin is a phenomenal receiver. He's a great pick, right? Derek Forrest was a good pick. Uh, They've had great picks, man. Cosme's a decent player. Like, They've had some good picks. So I think that Washington is just sad because they have not been able to transform all of these good picks above average hit rate, even though they've been kind of in the middle of the drafts into good football teams. And I think it's because they missed on Haskins, but I think it's also because they simply don't have good organization in their franchise. And I hope that changes because I think they're pretty good at drafting. At number eight, the Philadelphia Eagles. It's no surprise that the Philadelphia Eagles have arguably one of, if not the most talented roster in football, and they're here inside the top 10 when it comes to drafting. The Eagles actually have not had great drafting success as of late. I think where the Eagles have been their best has been value drafting. They're very good at finding guys in the fourth, fifth round. They stole Jalen Hurts in 2020, which was obviously the biggest pick they've made as of late. They've been fairly consistent on first round picks. Devontae Smith was kind of like a hit route right down the fairway type deal. And they've been good at trading and things of that nature. And they were so good at drafting like before 2017 that it's built up the roster to such a degree that when you add a couple great picks on top of it, you get a lot out of it. And the Eagles are also a team where they haven't been able to keep everybody around because they have so much talent, they can't pay everybody. But I love some of their picks over the years. My Lada, I don't know how they thought that guy was going to be great. I think he was a rugby player. He turned into be a stud left tackle. Josh Sweat was a guy I loved in the draft as a later pick. They got him. He turned out to be really good. A guy like, Avante Maddox, who is just, I think, a really good workout guy, turned into a really good nickel player. And they're great at offensive lineman drafting. We know that. So the Philadelphia Eagles, one of the best teams in the league at drafting, especially when it comes to finding guys later in the draft. At number seven, the Kansas City Chiefs. I think people could argue that the Chiefs should be higher. But the problem with me for the Chiefs has been a lot of it has come down to Mahomes. They picked Mahomes. And then other than that, they've picked some good players. But they've actually missed on a lot of their picks. But because they picked Mahomes, and they already had Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey before that, that kind of just allowed them to miss a few times, like on Mikkel Hardman and guys like that, and just continue to kind of chip away. And the area they've been really good is offensive line. Creed Humphrey, awesome, right? They found Trey Smith later in the draft, awesome pick. Now they've got the right tackle they also picked in 2020. So, Legereus Sneed was a great steal, late find. They drafted two good linebackers. They've had some good picks, no doubt. 2022 is a year that a lot of people look at and say, that's a spectacular draft. And that's why people may put them in the top three in drafting, but 2022 isn't included. But from 2017 through 2021, they got Mahomes, they found some quality steals, they found some quality linemen, 
And overall, just some good enough players to just add to a team with a generational quarterback, a great coach, and a couple already awesome players on the roster. At number six, the Indianapolis Colts, who have 11 starters that they've drafted on their team since 2017. Part of that is the fact that the Colts love to draft. They like playing the guys that are homegrown. They don't love going into free agency. They don't love making trades. It's very rare that they sign veterans. That's why it was really rare when they signed Stephon Gilmore last year. It's a rare thing. It doesn't happen very often. But they have been very good. You got to give them credit at drafting. And I think Ballard's done a very good job. The only area that he hasn't is quarterback. And that's what's really hurt them. Since losing Andrew Luck, They've tried to go with veteran quarterbacks, free agent quarterbacks. They've been reluctant to find a franchise out of the draft. Part of that has been because of the draft position they have. They couldn't really try to trade up and move all their assets into the top of the draft to get a quarterback. So now in 2023, they have that opportunity potentially at number four. This is their highest pick in a while. But the Colts have picked some really awesome players. Quentin Nelson, Shaq Leonard, Michael Pittman, Jonathan Taylor, Quiddy Pay, Isaiah Rogers, Julian Blackman, some really good players. And some of them have been late round steals. Some of them have been just like second, third rounders. But a lot of them have been players that are not exactly at premier positions. They haven't picked a lot of home runs at tackle. They haven't picked a lot of home runs at at defensive end they haven't picked a lot of home runs at receiver there's been one at all of those positions but not like spectacular Justin Jefferson type players at receiver not Jalen Ramsey type players at corner right their best picks have been guard running back linebacker that type of deal which hurts the value at times but also you got to give them credit where credit is due so Colts are a really, really tough one to evaluate. Entering the top five teams in drafting ability in the NFL today, at number five, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think you could argue that they should be higher here. As of late, they haven't been the best at drafting. And I think that lowered them to five because they were really good at drafting when they had good picks. But as of late, they haven't been at their best picking great players at the value, at the ADP that they've had, right? Those years leading up to Tom Brady, they hit home run after home run after home run. That's why they're in the top five. I believe they have the most franchise players out of all of these teams that they've drafted. They drafted Vita Vea. They stole Chris Godwin. They drafted Tristan Wirfs, which I would argue was a steal because I think he was the third or fourth tackle in the draft picked. Antoine Winfield Jr., was a second round steal of a franchise player at safety. Even Devin White, you could argue, but Carlton Davis, Jamel Dean, both weren't first round picks. Uh, So they've had some really good picks. And then that doesn't even include some of the guys they lost that also contributed to their winning, like Mike Edwards, Sean Murphy Bunting, Alex Kappa, these guys that were also drafted. So the Bucs have done a really good job They have one of the best GMs in football. And I think overall as an organization, there's a reason why Tom Brady in 2019 entering 2020 said that looks like a pretty good young roster because they had all those pieces that they drafted coming into the fold. And that's why Tom Brady chose them. And that's why they ended up having a great run. So that's why they're at number five. At number four, I have the Cincinnati Bengals. The Cincinnati Bengals have not had the highest quantity of selections that have been great picks, but their best picks have been darn good picks. Joe Burrow at first overall was most people's first overall pick. There was some rumblings that people wanted Tua. There was that Tua crowd, of course, the Tua non that is so strong. But I was with Joe Burrow. Majority of people were with Joe Burrow. That was a pretty easy pick, but... Still, you got to be lucky to be good, right? So Joe Burrow falls into their lap, but 
T. Higgins in that draft. They drafted T. Higgins in that draft in the second round. That's a first round receiver by any standard, right? Jamar Chase. A lot of people said they shouldn't have picked Jamar Chase. A lot of people said they should have picked Penny Sewell. Like people forget this stuff, right? But Jamar Chase was a spectacular pick. Joe Mixon, for whatever you think of him, was a spectacular pick at the time. Logan Wilson was a spectacular pick. Uh, Jonah Williams was a solid pick. He was a first rounder, but decent enough. Jermaine Pratt was a great pick. Sam Hubbard was a great pick. Evan McPherson, the kicker, later in the draft was a great pick. And then that doesn't include some other guys that they picked that aren't around anymore that left for money elsewhere that were very good picks. So the Cincinnati Bengals, I think, have been, as of late especially, a team I keep an eye on because they're very good at finding that talent, especially in the first three rounds. But now the question will be, now that they're at the back of drafts, how do they operate? How do they pick? How do they find players? Last year, that was their first year with Daxton Hill. Now this year, which we didn't really know, we didn't really see Daxton Hill last year. So it's going to take more time for some of these guys to develop because they have such a good team. They're a premier team. They're a contender. So the Bengals from 2017 through 2021 made them what they are today. Can they continue that is the question. At number three, the third best drafting team in the NFL today is the Dallas Cowboys. It absolutely is the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys are a phenomenal drafting team no matter how you hate on them. The fact of the matter is they are great at drafting. I don't know if it's Jerry Jones. I don't know if it's his son. I don't know if it's some guy hired in the background. I don't know if it's Matthew McConaughey. I don't know who it is. But the Dallas Cowboys are very good at drafting players. Micah Parsons, a lot of people didn't think that he was a value at that pick later in the top 10. And everyone said he's just a linebacker. He can't do anything, right? But he's a great pick. (laughs) He's pretty good, right? Trayvon Diggs, where they picked him in the second round, great pick. CeeDee Lamb, later in the first round. He actually fell, I believe. That was a great pick. They've had some really good picks. And you can't deny it. Donovan Wilson late in the draft. Tony Pollard late in the draft. Dorrance Armstrong late in the draft. Leighton Vander Esch was a pretty good pick. So they had a really good pick. Michael Gallup, I think, was a little bit later. So the Dallas Cowboys have found a lot of good players on defense, on offense. And if you included 2016, I think you would argue that the Cowboys might be the best team in the league at drafting players because that's where Zeke came from. That's where Dak came from. The drafting of the players does not include their choices to extend some of those players. Let's remember that. The second best team in the NFL today at drafting, I have the Buffalo Bills. This is definitely debatable, but the Buffalo Bills have 12 players, 12 that they have drafted that are starting on their team. Bean and McDermott, you cannot argue, have done a phenomenal job of drafting no matter what location they are at in the draft. Now, there have been some misses now that they're a contender and a perennial kind of contender playoff team now. There have been a couple misses, but in order to get to that contender status, they were hitting out of the park. Josh Allen, I think, was what? Eighth pick? Seventh pick? Even though I had him as the best quarterback in the draft, not a lot of other people did. So Josh Allen to get him after Baker Mayfield, after Sam Darnold, yeah, that's a pretty darn good pick. Tredavious White, phenomenal pick. Deion Dawkins, phenomenal pick. Matt Milano in like the fifth round, phenomenal pick. Gabriel Davis is a kind of a good pick. The only one I would argue that's not great, that was like a high priority pick, is probably Ed Oliver. Like, Ed Oliver was a top 10 pick, and I believe that was, what year was it, 2019? Not their best pick. Other than that, Gregory Rousseau looks to be a very good pick. And they've even found some later guys in the draft, like Teron Johnson, who I love, Nickel Corner, some niche players at certain spots that they've hit out of the park. So the Bills have been heavy on the drafting, and that's why they've been able to maintain such a good roster from really 2019 through 2023. That's why they're still here because they've drafted most of these players. The best team in the NFL at drafting since 2017 is the San Francisco 49ers. 
the San Francisco 49ers. Is Kyle Shanahan the best general manager in the league and the best coach in the league? You got to give some credit to John Lynch as well, but the results speak for themselves. 13 starters, four franchise players, and maybe even more, and three late round gems. Some of them are even all pros. Hufanga, I didn't put as a franchise player. He made the all pro team. So the San Francisco 49ers, I think are easily number one, like easily, despite missing on Trey Lance. They are still the best team at drafting. They drafted Nick Boza, who wasn't the first pick in the draft, by the way. He was the second pick. They drafted Debo Samuel in the second round. They drafted George Kittle very late. They drafted Fred Warner in the mid-rounds. They drafted uh, Aaron Banks, Brandon Ayuk late in the first round. They drafted uh, Dre Greenlaw in the mid-rounds. So, I mean, Lenore is going to be a starting corner for them. And that doesn't include some of the other players they picked that are no longer on the team. I mean, Mike McGlinchey just got a huge contract and some people say that was a bad pick by them. So what's the standards here for good and bad picks? I would have said that's a pretty decent pick for a lot of teams other than the San Francisco 49ers. The only below average picks they've had in the first round, really, Trey Lance and maybe Javon Kinlaw. Other than that... They've had so many picks that have worked out. Elijah Mitchell is a great pick that I didn't include here because he doesn't start. He doesn't even start, okay? So the San Francisco 49ers, yeah, they missed on quarterback, but it doesn't outweigh how they've built the best defense in football and how they've built one of the freakiest kind of combinations of skill position players. Now, how much of that has to do with the coaching? How much of that has to do with the development? That's a great question because they've certainly developed these players very well. But I think when you just take it for what it is, this is the best drafting team in the NFL. Let me know yours in the comment section below and also let me know your list of the best drafting teams in the NFL today. That's my list. Hope you enjoyed. I know it's completely subjective and very tricky, but let me know your thoughts. It's Mitch. Thanks for watching. Peace.